ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सायरा मुश्तबा एंड विद मी इज सुनील वर्मा द हेडलाइंस यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल कॉल्स फॉर इमिजिएट एंड टू द वायलेंस एंड एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ न्यू गवर्नमेंट इन अफगानिस्तान एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर एस जयशंकर सेज गवर्नमेंट इज मॉनिटरिंग सिचुएशन इन काबुल कंटिन्यूअसली सेट्स अप स्पेशल सेल टू कोऑर्डिनेट फॉर रिपैट्रिएशन फ्रॉम वॉर टॉन कंट्री यूएस प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडन सेज He stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw US forces from Afghanistan. Kabul International Airport reopens for evacuation process says United States. Prime Minister Modi to interact with Indian para athlete contingent for Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games this morning. In a record breaking feat, India administers over 55 crore 14 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses so far. Center allocates 267.35 crore rupees to Kerala under emergency covid response package 2. Total number of houses sanctioned under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban reaches 1.13 crore. And in cricket, India defeat England by 151 runs in the second test of five match series at Lords. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain two gas ki duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers zero double one two three nine seven eight zero four six and one zero seven five. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz will be conducted on every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news at 8:30 a.m. till 15th of August 2022. Recalling our yesterday's question Mahatma Gandhi ji's historic Dandi march was held for how many days The correct answer is 24 days Mahatma Gandhi led the 390 km long historic salt march from Sabarmati ashram to Dandi in Gujarat from 12th of March to 5th of April in 1930 This was a tax resistance campaign against the British salt monopoly AIR News got an overwhelming response from its listeners across the world and the lucky winner of the quiz is Rahul Kashyap from Shimla Himachal Pradesh Congratulations Rahul from team AIR News And now coming to our second question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz What was the name of an all women regiment set up in Azad Hind Forge Repeat What was the name of an all women regiment set up in Azad Hind Forge Listeners can send their responses to the question over email on amritmahotsavquiz@gmail.com One participant will be selected as a winner and will be declared in tomorrow's morning news at 8:30 a.m. The winner will be awarded an e-certificate and a token prize And now the news in detail External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar has said the government is monitoring the situation in Kabul continuously. In a tweet Dr J Shankar said the government understands the anxiety of those seeking to return to India. He said airport operations are the main challenge and discussions are going on with partners in that regard. The minister said given the Kabul situation it is important that they have accurate information about Indians there. He urged 
that this be provided by all concerned at the MEA Special Afghanistan cell on phone number plus nine one nine seven one seven seven eight five three seven nine and email MEA Help Desk India at gmail dot com. Dr. Jay Shankar said the government is in constant touch with the Sikh and Hindu community leaders in Kabul. He said their welfare will get our priority attention. Meanwhile, the external affairs minister also discussed latest developments in Afghanistan with U.S. Secretary of State Antony J. Blinken last night. They underlined the urgency of restoring airport operations in Kabul. Dr. Jay Shankar said in a tweet that he deeply appreciates the American efforts underway in this regard. The United Nations Security Council (UNSC) has called for an immediate cessation of all hostilities and the establishment of a new government in Afghanistan that is united, inclusive, and representative. The Security Council has expressed deep concerns over reported serious violations of international humanitarian law and human rights abuses in Afghanistan. The UN Security Council issued a press statement which called for an immediate end to the violence in Afghanistan. the restoration of security civil and constitutional order the unsc members also called for urgent talks to resolve the current crisis of authority in the country and to arrive at a peaceful settlement through an afghan led afghan owned process of national reconciliation the statement comes as unsc held a meeting on afghanistan yesterday under the indian presidency the meeting comes a day after kabul fell to the taliban seizing control of the presidential palace speaking during the UNSC meet UN secretary general Antonio Guterres called for international unity on Afghanistan and expressed deep concern over the mounting human rights violations in the country the international community must be united and utilize all available instruments to ensure the following first We must speak with one voice to uphold human rights in Afghanistan. I call upon the Taliban and all parties to respect and protect international humanitarian law and the rights and freedoms of all persons. We are receiving chilling reports of severe restrictions on human rights throughout the country, and I am particularly concerned by accounts of mounting human rights violations against the women and girls of Afghanistan who fear a return to the darkest days. It is essential that the hard-won rights of Afghan women and girls are protected. Afghanistan's representative to the United Nations Ghulam Isakzai made a fervent appeal to the international community to prevent Afghanistan from descending into a civil war. Meanwhile, India's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador TS Tirumurthy said that as a neighbor and friend of Afghanistan, India's concern about the situation and hopes that the situation stabilizes soon. as a neighbor of afghanistan as a friend of its people the current situation prevailing in the country is of great concern to us in india afghan men women and children are living under a constant state of fear they are uncertain about their future everyone is concerned about the increasing violations of the fundamental rights of the afghan citizens afghans are worried about whether their right to live with dignity would be respected there are many unanswered questions we hope that the situation stabilizes soon and the parties concerned address the humanitarian and security issues we also hope that there is an inclusive dispensation which represents all sections of afghan society voices of afghan women aspirations of afghan children and the rights of minorities must be respected in a statement issued yesterday the taliban said that they would work with existing institutions it is crucial that civil servant salaries continue to be paid infrastructure be maintained airports reopened and health and education services continue us president joe biden has said that he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw us forces from afghanistan and that the government's collapse was quicker than anticipated The statement comes in the wake of criticism of the US president over Taliban's lightning conquest of the war-torn country. On Sunday, the Taliban declared victory after Afghan president Ashraf Ghani fled and his government collapsed. In his televised address to the nation from the White House last night, President Biden said he was faced with the choice between sticking to a previously negotiated agreement to withdraw US troops this year or sending thousands more servicemen back into Afghanistan for a third decade of war I stand squarely behind my decision 
After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency. But I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. The United States said that Kabul's Hamid Karzai International Airport has resumed operations. At a press conference by Pentagon this morning, Major General Hank Taylor said a C-17 aircraft landed yesterday with Marines aboard and another C-17 was expected to land later. The statement comes hours after the airport, which is the only U.S.-controlled territory in the Taliban-occupied Afghan capital, was reportedly shut down as thousands of Afghans crowded the tarmac. Meanwhile, the Taliban have taken over the capital Kabul and claimed victory in the country. A spokesperson for the group told a news network that their fighters have seized the presidential palace. They claim that the government has collapsed and President Ashraf Ghani has fled. They declared that the war is over. Kabul descended into chaos and residents and foreign nationals have been trying to escape. At the capital's international airport, an eyewitness told a TV channel that staff had abandoned their desks and people were running to planes. Kabul was the last major city in Afghanistan to hold out against the Taliban offensive, which began months ago, but has accelerated in the space of days as they rapidly gained control of territories. The world leaders have expressed dismay and concern over the chaotic scenes in the Afghan capital Kabul, with the Taliban now effectively taking control of the country. German Chancellor Angela Merkel warned that Afghans fleeing from the Taliban to neighboring countries could make their way to Europe in a repeat of the 2015 migrant crisis if they don't get sufficient humanitarian assistance. French President Emmanuel Macron has said that Afghanistan must not become a safe haven for terrorists again. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson called the situation extremely difficult and said it is very important that West collectively should work together as no one wants Afghanistan to become a breeding crowd for terror. The Union Home Ministry has reviewed visa provisions in view of the current situation in Afghanistan. The ministry spokesperson said in a tweet that a new category of electronic visa called E-Emergency x miss Visa, that is miscellaneous visa, has been introduced to fast-track visa applications for entry into India. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar has reached New York, where he will be presiding over two high-level signature events of the United Nations. The first event will be an open debate tomorrow on Protecting the Protectors, Technology and Peacekeeping. The second event on Thursday will be a high-level briefing on Threats to International Peace and Security Caused by Terrorist Acts. His visit to New York comes during India's Presidency of the United Nations Security Council. The open debate on peacekeeping will focus on the theme of protecting the protectors, including through the use of modern technological tools to enhance the safety and security of peacekeepers and to aid peacekeeping missions. An MOU between India and the United Nations in support of the Partnership for Technology in Peacekeeping initiative is expected to be signed during the visit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke with his Israeli counterpart, Nafsali Bennett on phone yesterday. During the conversation, both the leaders expressed satisfaction over the remarkable growth in bilateral relationship in recent years. Mr. Modi emphasized that India greatly values its robust cooperation with Israel in areas like agriculture, water, defense and security, and cyber security. Both the leaders also agreed on the potential to further expand cooperation, especially in areas of high technology and innovation. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. United Nations Security Council calls for immediate end to the violence and establishment of new government in Afghanistan. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar says, Government is monitoring situation in Kabul continuously, sets up special cells, 
to coordinate for repatriation from war-torn country. U.S. President Joe Biden says he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw U.S. forces from Afghanistan. Kabul International Airport reopens for evacuation process, says U.S. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with Indian para-athlete contingent for Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games this morning. In a record-breaking feat, India administers over 55 crore, 14 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses so far. Centre allocates 267.35 crore rupees to Kerala under Emergency COVID Response Package 2. Total number of houses sanctioned under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban reaches 1.13 crore. And in cricket, India defeat England by 151 runs in the second test of five-match series at Lords. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Azadi ka safar every day with All India Radio from Monday the 16th of August as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav News Services Division of All India Radio brings to you the story of glorious struggle and sacrifices of freedom fighters on 100.1 FM Gold Channel in the English News Bulletins at 8.30 a.m., 2.00 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Stay tuned. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with the Indian para-athlete contingent for Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games at 11 a.m. today through video conferencing. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said he is looking forward to interact with India's contingent participating in the Paralympics. He said these are remarkable players who have shown outstanding skill and tenacity. The Prime Minister urged sports lovers to watch the program today. शायद खेल से भी बढ़कर इस पैरा ओलंपिक ने और हमारे खिलाड़ियों के प्रदर्शन ने मानवता के दृष्टिकोण को दिव्यांग के प्रति देखने के दृष्टिकोण को पूरी तरह बदल दिया Fifty-four para-athletes from across nine sports disciplines will be heading to Tokyo to represent the nation. The central government has decided to allocate 267 crores 35 lakh rupees to Kerala under Emergency COVID Response Package 2. This fund will strengthen the state's health infrastructure and effectively manage COVID. Other than this, 1 crore rupees will be made available for each district of the state for creating a medicine pool. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia reviewed the COVID-19 response in Kerala with Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan and Kerala Health Minister Veena George yesterday. In a series of tweets, Mr. Mandavia said, The central government has assured all possible health to Kerala, including providing vaccines to the state. The creation of a center of excellence that caters to telemedicine facilities in every district in Kerala was also envisaged with the support of the center. For prioritizing health of children, pediatric ICU will be established in district hospitals. In a record-breaking progress, India has administered over 55 crore 14 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses so far. The Union Health Ministry said more than 42 crore 84 lakh vaccine doses were administered as the first dose and over 12 crore vaccine doses were given as the second dose so far. The new phase of universalization of COVID-19 vaccination commenced from 21st of June this year. The ministry said more than 55 lakh vaccine doses were administered yesterday. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has approved proposals for construction of 16,488 houses at the 55th meeting of Central Sanctioning and Monitoring Committee under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban PMAYU. The houses are proposed to be constructed under Beneficiary-Led Construction BLC and Affordable Housing in Partnership AHP Verticals of PMAYU. With this, the total number of sanctioned houses under PMAYU has now gone up to over 1.13 crore. In Uttar Pradesh, the short-term monsoon session of the Uttar Pradesh Vidhan Mandal Legislative Assembly and Legislative Council will begin today. 
The supplementary budget of the government will also be tabled during the session. The session is likely to remain stormy due to the raising of various issues by the opposition. News Justin, the External Affairs Ministry today said the Indian ambassador in Kabul and his Indian staff will be moved to India immediately. Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bhakti said in a tweet that the decision has been taken in view of the prevailing circumstances in Afghanistan. In Madhya Pradesh, an interministerial central study team led by Joint Secretary in Union Ministry of Home Affairs, Sunil Kumar Barnawal, is on a two-day visit to the flood-affected areas of Gwalior and Chambal divisions. The team will assess the damage caused by heavy rains and floods in the state. More from our Bhopal correspondent. Around 2,444 villages have been badly affected by floods and excessive rainfall. As per preliminary estimates, heavy damage has been caused to government and public property in nine districts including eight districts, Gwalior, Guna, Shipuri, Datiya, Ashoknagar, Shiopur, Bhind, Morena of Gwalior Chambal Division and one district, Vidisha of Bhopal Division. In the relief and rescue operations, more than 21,000 people were provided shelter in 161 relief camps set up to provide quick relief to the people affected. The central team will also call on Chief Minister after inspecting flood-affected districts. Pooja Pivardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. In today's episode, we will give you a brief about Madan Lal Dhingra. This day is the death anniversary of Madan Lal Dhingra. The wave of independence movement has started initially as a protest against the partition of Bengal and it gradually grew into a demand for complete freedom. Indians realized the fact that a group of foreigners who came to our shores as traitors had cleverly divided the people and started ruling them. The wealth of this vast land was systematically looted by them. The very same people who depended on us for their trade started crushing our cottage and village industries, treating the people of the soil as slaves. This naturally needed an equal and proportionate reply. The people revolted against the oppressors and the country began witnessing sporadic protests. Cruel treatment to the freedom fighters, legendary heroes by the British, agitated youth and one of such young freedom activists was Madan Lal Dhingra. Madan Lal Dhingra was born on 18th of September 1883 in Amritsar, Punjab. He went to Lahore in 1900 to study at the Government College University. There he was influenced by the nationalist movement which at that time was about seeking home rule. Dhingra was specially troubled by the poverty of India. He studied the literature concerning the causes of Indian poverty and felt that the solution to these problems lay in Swaraj and Swadeshi. In 1904, Dhingra led a student protest against the principal's order to have the college blazer made of cloth imported from Britain. He was expelled from the college for this. In general, the incidence of revolutionary nationalism was on the rise during those days. This incident brought Dhingra closer to the revolutionary nationalism. In 1905, Dhingra went to London and stayed in India House. India House was a student residence located in North London. With the patronage of lawyer Shamji Krishna Varma, it was open to promote nationalist views among Indian students in Britain. It was in India House that Madanlal Dhingra met V.D. Savarkar, who was then the manager of India House. Meanwhile, on 8th of June 1909, Baba Rao Ganesh Savarkar, elder brother of Veer Savarkar, was sentenced to transportation for life. This deportation of Baba Rao Savarkar enraged the revolutionaries in London. William Hutkarzen Wiley was the head of the secret police then and had been trying to obtain information about Savarkar and other revolutionaries. It was because of Karzan Wiley that the revolutionary freedom fighters in London were being targeted. The Journal of Shyamji Krishnavarma, named the Indian Sociologist, described Wiley as old repentant foe of India who has fattened on the misery of the Indian peasant ever since they began their career. The resentment was such among the revolutionaries that somehow forced Dhingra to take an extreme step. 
On 1st July 1909, Dingra attended a gathering hosted by the National Indian Association at the Imperial Institute. William Hurt Curzon Willie, the British officer, was also present in the meeting. At the end of the event, as the guests were leaving, Dingra shot Curzon Willie at point blank range. Dingra was immediately arrested. At his trial, he represented himself, though he did not recognize the legitimacy of the court. He claimed that the gunning down of Curzon Willie was a patriotic act and in retaliation for the inhuman killings of Indians by the British government in India. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. He was executed at Pentonville Prison on 17th of August 1909. Young Madanlal Dhingra had a comfortable and promising start to life. His English education assured him that, but that wasn't to be. He preferred to avenge injustice done to his countrymen. He knew it very well that avenging would entail untold misery for him, yet he took the plunge. Such was the determination of young Dhingra and this and many more such sacrifices paved the way for a freedom that was to come many decades later. And what a coincidence it was that in 1947, the withdrawal of British forces started from 17th of August. On 17th of August, the first major unit made its exit from the former colony. A large contingent of the Royal Air Force sailed from Bombay to as it was then known back Great Britain. Of course, the total withdrawal of all British troops took time. It wasn't until February 1948 that the final departures took place. British withdrawal signaled the end of the colonial Indian Army. Historians are predominantly in agreement that Lord Mountbatten's haste in withdrawing the British forces from India and essentially split the country. That's all today. Let's keep celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. We'll bring you more tomorrow. In cricket, India defeated England by 151 runs in the second test at Lords. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The stupendous performance of the men in blue at Lords and hundreds of Afghan civilians descending on the tarmac at the Afghanistan airport in an attempt to flee the war torn country after its fall to Taliban are some of the prominent stories on the front pages today. And before we end the bulletin, a reminder of today's question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. What was the name of an all-women regiment set up in Azad Hind Forge? Send your response over email on amritmahotsavquiz at gmail.com And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. UNSC calls for immediate end to the violence and establishment of new government in Afghanistan. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar says government is monitoring situation in Kabul continuously, sets up special cell to coordinate for repatriation from war-torn country. U.S. President Joe Biden says he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw U.S. forces from Afghanistan. Kabul International Airport reopens for evacuation process, says U.S. PM Modi to interact with Indian para-athlete contingent for Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games this morning. In a record-breaking feat, India administers over 55 crore 14 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses so far. Center allocates 267.35 crore rupees to Kerala under Emergency COVID Response Package 2. Total number of houses sanctioned under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban reaches 1.13 crore. And in cricket, India defeats England by 151 runs in the second test of five match series at Lords. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day. <laughs> 